Hi and welcome back to my film and TV channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. And I started watching today's uh, little series back in August, yes, but I wasn't able to binge watch it. It's only been showing weekly. And finally, it's over, yes. Uh, I'm recording this on the 23rd of October and we've uh, got to the last episode of 10. Of course, we're, we're talking about the massive, the massive fantasy drama. House of the Dragon. So we'll have a chat about that today, give you some information, give you my thoughts on it as well now that it's all done and out of the way. So if you you know you could probably go back and binge watch this now all in one go, but I couldn't I couldn't wait from August till now to watch this. I'm a big, big fan of well, I'm a big fan of all film genres as you know, but especially uh, fantasy film genres and historically based things, even though obviously they're very lightly based on true facts. Uh, I'll go with the flow, it doesn't bother me. House of the Dragon, we'll have a look at that. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. It's great to have you on board. Uh, I try and inform and entertain if I can on these things. Uh, please spread the word and leave us your comments on this if you liked it, if you're a Game of Thrones fans originally, sort of thing. Where I've not read the books, but I'll probably go back and read the books after watching it. It's the sort of thing, that's the sort of interest I've got in this sort of thing. So let me know your comments and please. If you've got time, just give us a little thumbs up. It takes a split second, uh, and it, it's just very appreciated. I know it sounds. I think if we're all we all use Twitter and you, some of us YouTube, and it's just nice to get thumbs up and likes. Of course, it is. So if you do that for me, thank you very much. Right, a fantasy drama television series, independent prequel to Game of Thrones, which ran from twenty eleven to twenty nineteen. I feel old now. And the second show in the franchise created by George R. R. Martin and Ryan Condal for HBO, of course, who've been showing this. Both series based on The Song of Ice and Fire by Martin Condal and Miguel Sapchnik are showrunners for this one. Based on parts of the novel Fire and Blood, the series is set about 200 years before the events of Games of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like a closer link, but I'm sure that's potential for that coming along. I'm perhaps thinking not far enough ahead, uh, to be honest with you. And it's 172 years before the birth of Daenerys Targaryen, uh, descendant of the eponymous royal house, and 100 years after the Seven Kingdoms is united by the Targaryen. My apologies, pronunciation, you guys. Conquest. It portrays the beginning of the end of the house. The events leading up to and covering. Targaryen Civil War of Succession, known as the Dance of the Dragons, telling the story of the Targaryen Civil War with King Viserys one Tar oh, and the children battling for gun control of the Iron Throne. There you go. You know what it's all about. What are the public thinking? What what a bit mixed actually? Yeah, well, not not mixed in these initial ones, but then I went over to another site and they were uh, Rotten Tomatoes audience quite like it. They're eighty four percent positive. If you look at Internet Movie Database, almost two hundred thousand scores and reviews have been left. And at this point in time, and I can't see it dropping or, or altering that much. Eight point six out of ten, so that's not too shabby, is it? Uh, you do get ninety thousand people who've scored it ten out of ten, which obviously skews the figures a little bit. But it does have overall, if you look look deep into the stats, a 91% positivity, so even higher than Rotten Tomatoes. And the other side that sort of books the trend, and there's a, a few hundred reviews on there, Metacritic, the Metascore site that I look at, it's only getting a 5.1 out of 10. I'm no real breakdown at that, but that's, a, that's, a quite, that's quite low for the public, 5.1 out of 10. But they do book the trend on what we've seen. The series premiered back on August the 21st, and as I said, as of the 23rd of October, it's now finished its run. It consists of 10 episodes, about an hour, an hour on, I think some are longer than an hour, some are slightly shorter. Uh, five days after its premiere, the series renewed, was renewed for a second season, Happy Days. Sapochnik departed his showrunner after the first season, leaving Condal to serve as a sole showrunner for the second season. Well, if, he wants, if he wants a hand, just get on to me, mate, I'll, I'll help out. Uh, yeah, just a criticism here, which we'll come back to in a minute. Yeah, the pacing, uh, the time jumps and the uh, lighting of some of the scenes were criticised. Yeah, it's a bit dark, I think, than Game of Thrones generally, uh, which is, you know, the, the word dark, there's lots of darks in Game of Thrones, of course, but they're just generally a little bit darker, this. Um, so more, more of, the, of that sort of critique about the time jumps, etc. in a minute. This was watched by over 10 million viewers. Uh, the very first episode, which was the biggest in HBO's history. I'm not too sure of the figures for later episodes. 
All right, there you go. So all these scores and critics' comments are at the 23rd of October 2022. Let's talk about the critics. The public, generally, uh, by the looks of it, are quite happy with it. There's going to be, obviously, exceptions to the rule, of course. So it's critics, yeah, not too bad. Rotten Tomatoes, overall, an 86% positivity based on almost 800 reviews. A consensus covering an era of tenuous peace with ferocious, albeit abbreviated focus. House of the Dragon is an impressive prequel that exemplifies the court intrigue that distinguished its predecessor. That's what I love about it. I do like the court intrigue. Metacritic, the site where the public weren't happy, the critics were okay, not quite as enamoured as Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, 69 out of 100, that's based on 43 critics. 29 were positive. 13 mix, which is a fair, fair, fair chunk, and just one negative. But 13 mix reviews, it was interesting. And it did score anywhere, anywhere between 38 out of 100 and 90 out of 100. So let's name and shame or acclaim uh, whoever they are, these guys. Let's start with some, a couple of the lower ones. Rolling Stone's Alan Seppinwall. He only gave it 40 out of 100. His, his conclusion was, every time House of the Dragon starts to get even the most precarious emotional foothold, we are suddenly years into the future and the impact diminishes. Nearly everyone around the princess is boring meanwhile. Yeah, I think this is definitely a fault. It was a fault for me when I watched it before I started looking at critics' reviews. I, you sort of, I was invested in characters and all of a sudden they'd grown up and I had to reinvest in the character at an older age. But yeah, it was a bit frustrating. But uh, as Alan said there, I'm not too sure about the boring. I was never I was never bored with it. Some people said it took a while to get going. I was sort of instantly hooked on this series, in fairness. It might might have uh, sort of got a bit uh, a bit long in the middle or felt a bit long in the middle. It's far, but it sort of hooked me straight away, so I certainly wasn't bored with it. Mike Hale, he gave it 50 out of 100. He's from the New York Times. He said, as an exploration of the social contract in a decadent monarchy and an allegory for a grab bag of modern ills, including patriarchal sexism and the corrosive effects of weapons of mass destruction. I don't know where you get all these from, but I don't look, I never look too that deeply into these things. I just look for it to be entertained. House of the Dragon is reasonably smart and well put together. That seriousness of purpose doesn't translate into engaging drama, however. There's a lot of sitting around tables and talking, said Mike. Well, I'll be honest with you, it's sitting around the tables and talking that appeals to me as much as the other stuff in these sort of series. So it eh, didn't bother me one I alter, I liked it. Times Judy Berman, a little bit more popular on it. I think she scored it 60, 60 out of 100. She said, nothing about the first several episodes of House of the Dragon premiering on August 21st on HBO marks it as a potential masterpiece. There are structural flaws, elements that come across as excessively derivative and yawning void where, where thematic resonance should be. But it's solid enough. Dragon plays it safe. Yeah, and I think it does, but I've got no reason to think that's a bad thing for me. I'm quite happy with it. I didn't expect bells and whistles added to the original games of Rome. I'm getting I'm getting what, what's on the tin for me. Uh, I feel thoroughly engaged. The Guardian's Lucy Mangan usually has a bit of a downer, our Lucy, but she's uh, yeah, she's okay on this. She's positive on this. She said, uh, in short, all it is. All, all is as it was in Game of Thrones' heyday. Fun, propulsive, looking great and sounding passable. Uh, and I think that sort of more or less sums it up. Uh, Lucy for the guy, I think she gave it 70 out of 100. Uh, and that's pretty much all I wanted from this. I didn't want, as I said, from that previous comment, I didn't really want anything else. I've got, we get we get what, what I expected and thoroughly enjoyed it. So on to my little thoughts before we finish. I'm going to give this, and I think this is my highest score for a while, and certainly a highest score uh, of this year. Well, probably this year, yeah. I mean, we're in October now, aren't we? I don't so There's not many, not many things I've given eight out of ten to. I'm not going to give this eight out of ten. I nearly went seven and a half. I thought, sod it, no, I'm going to give it an eight out of ten. I really enjoyed it. And as I said, the main, own real criticism is is the pacing and the time jumps. And I think I wanted to spend a lot more time with some of the characters. Uh, before they jumped a few years and turned into someone else, so okay, I might, I still might want to spend time with them, but I just, it just felt as I missed out. But obviously, how long can a series go on for? It probably, you know, talk about uh, eight series, nine series, Game of Thrones, whatever it was. I mean, you know, this this could season one could have easily been stretched into three or four seasons in itself with all the different characters. I'm sure they could have found enough content for it. But uh, yeah, with all within those constraints. I suppose it has to be done, but I think it proves, uh, 
investment in the characters for me, which I like to do in film, I like in films or series, I like to invest in characters. And that's what I did. So I was disappointed when they were moved on a few years. So I thought that's 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 a bad thing for me, but it, it probably is a good sign because at least I got invested. Great cast, some fantastic cats. That cast, of course, Matt, uh, Mr. Doctor Who himself, Mr. Smith was superb in this. Oh, I loved it. Uh, other Considine's getting a lot of hype. You know, all the actors. Uh, there's one or two weaker actors, but fortunately, they don't have very big parts, and they tend to be the uh, a few of the British actors, the, the minor actors that are not familiar to me anyway. But uh, they're not great, but uh, the, the cast generally is fantastic. Absolutely no problem whatsoever with the cast. Uh, I do love a binge watch, as I said. Unfortunately, I couldn't binge watch this, and it's one of these I just had to wait weekly for. Occasionally, I waited for a couple of weeks and watched, watched a couple in one go. Uh, but, yeah, as a binge watch, I would have loved it, and as a weekly watch, I loved it. So I don't think there's a lot of difference. Uh, just a bit a bit miffed that I can't. You know, this is the sort of thing I would start watching and literally finish off in a couple of days uh, because I would be so invested in it. And that's, again, a good sign. So I really enjoyed it. Not perfect, of course it's not. It's not without its faults, of course it's not, as it, as was as was not Game of Thrones. Uh, you know, there's a lot of criticism for the end series of that and finish the finish of it. I, I thought people were well over the top. I, I just loved it for what it was. I was just so sad it ended. And, yeah, they might have dragged it on for another series or two, but it is what it is. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Not perfect, not without its faults. Just, just excellent for me for fans of Games of Thrones. I mean, if you if you if you watch Games of Thrones and you, you enjoyed it, and you're not liking this. Just let me know. I mean, these it's all opinions, isn't it? But I don't see anything uh, untoward in this or less entertaining in this than Game Game of Thrones. Uh, I just love a good good verbal, which is what it is. Someone didn't like it. I do sitting around the table, all the backstabbing. I just like all that fantasy adventure with a bit of action thrown in. I'm not a big action fan. I don't mind action now and then. The dragons are impressive. I like the dragons. Uh, so great. Yeah, uh, absolutely brilliant for me. Loved it. It's not broke. Why fix it? I wanted more Game of, games of, game of Thrones and uh, for me, I got it. So I'll be happy with that. And the fireworks are going off. Why fireworks are going off at 1 p.m. in the afternoon? I have no idea. But hey, there you go. That's celebrating my 8 out of 10, I suppose. Anyway, I'm going to get off uh, while the noise is on. You might not pick it up on here. I don't know. But there's fireworks going off outside, as I say. Middle of the day. It's light. I just, I don't know. But, uh, there you go. Loved it. Loved it. Uh, House of the Dragon. Looking forward to series two. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Please, until we meet again. And that's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.